Hello everyone and welcome back to Helldivers 2. So we have a new war bond, the Polar Patriots. And since I'm doing this video, I have managed to unlock everything. So let's start going through it. Starting with the armor, we have the CW36 Winter Warrior. It's servo assisted. I will say this, none of the armor has Ah, fun. None of the armor has a new perk to it. It's not like the energy weapons one where we had the arc resist. This is all very straightforward. When a warrior has servo assist, the CW-22 Kodiak has fortified, and then the armor everybody was hyped about. The CW-4 Arctic Ranger has scout, which... Considering scout armor, that isn't surprising. It's light armor, and they always do that. It's weirder to actually see scout as a perk on anything but light. It looks cool, the Arctic Ranger armor. It's just the way the shading is, it doesn't go with really anything else. I know that's a very minor gripe, but it's just one of those things where once you realize it doesn't line up color-wise, it just kind of sucks because then you can't mix and match that. Because I like the helmet, I just can't use it anywhere else without kind of looking very messy. But the thing we've all been waiting for, the weapons. Like always, four weapons, three primaries, a secondary... I guess five weapons, you can count the grenade. But starting with the primaries, we have the AR-61 Tenderizer. It is, from what I can tell, it's essentially like the Marita rifle from uh, Starship Troopers. Which, I mean, that's cool. I, I like the reference. I'm a fan of Starship Troopers. The problem I have is the weapon's not the greatest. The damage is on par for the Liberator, so you're not getting anything extra, even though it says it's a powerful round. Slightly better recoil than the Liberator. Actually, it's the best recoil in the AR category. But the fire rate's lower than the Liberator, so... That high recoil reduction, or I guess low recoil, high reduction to it, doesn't mean much because you're already firing slower. What I will say after using it is it's a good, like, bot killer if they're standing still. If you want to get rid of a bunch of, like, devastators, if they stand still, you can just lay down and just drill them in the head and flatten them really fast. But the second they start moving, that plan goes away real quick. Their movement screws it up, and when I use it, I am giving you my experience as someone who isn't using any recoil reduction armor. This is just me kind of using this same armor with the 50% resist to lethal damage because I think it's a good baseline for all weapons testing. It's... I think its biggest letdown is the fact that it is light armor pen because it limits what you can do with the weapon itself. If it was, like, medium pen, I think they could get away with bumping the actual damage numbers a bit, or even bumping the recoil up. If it bounced a little more, I would be completely fine with it as a medium pen. Because otherwise, if you're fighting, like, Terminids, and I had this happen a few times, there'd be just a horde of Terminids, and I would just 
you know, aim down sights and just rock and roll. Hold the trigger and just start spraying. And there'd be one of, like, the hive guards somewhere in the line. And he would just eat the, t- eat the shots. And then I'd be like, oh, okay. I'm getting shut down now because I can't counter him. And while not every weapon needs to be a counter to medium armor, it is rough because outside of heavy weapons, you kind of feel like you have to use medium armor pen. Otherwise, you have to like circle around or hit really specific points, and it just becomes really troublesome. But our next weapon is one I'm actually using right now, the SMG-72 Pummeler. It's effectively the Defender. I mean, it, it literally is the Defender. It is a variant. So you have slightly worse damage than the Defender, lower fire rate, but it has the Stagger. The Stagger, I think, is the saving grace for this gun. Simply because when you fight, like, Devastators, you can either try to drill them in the head and you'll do pretty well, or just shoot them in the nuts. Because your damage output may not be the greatest, but that stagger actually will sometimes shut them down, and that's really good for your team. I think this gun is kind of a support weapon, almost, where sometimes you're in a position where you can't really afford to take on someone by yourself, but you can start team shotting. You stagger, shut down a Devastator, your buddy with a heavier weapon comes in and mops him up. I haven't used it with a Riot Shield. I think it's probably pretty good using the Riot Shield, but you gotta be a certain kind of person to be using the Riot Shield. I'm just not one of them. There is the Plaz 101 Purifier, our last primary weapon. I have nothing good to say about it. It is only slightly stronger than the Scorcher. It's only 50 points more. It has medium armor pen, which doesn't really mean much as an, it's an explosive weapon. So the Scorcher does the same thing. It's just a light armor pen. And then it has an AoE, but the AoE is really bad. I can see it being reworked in the future because of how low the damage is and just... It's not a remarkable weapon in the slightest. And then, to make matters worse, it has a charge time. And you can't just, like, fire... tap fire it and get a smaller blast radius. You have to hold charge for... I don't know, half a second, a whole second, something along those lines, and then you can actually fire. It's just, it's not good. It has to be reworked because in its current state, it's not worth using. It's too punishing. I don't know if on my end it's connection issues or what, but I swear I've had shots just drift through enemies. It's, it's so inconsistent. It's not worth using in its current state, and as much as I love the plasma weapons and I love AoEs, it's just bad. You will dump round after round into Berserkers, which, admittedly, Berserkers are tougher enemies, but you'll just hit them repeatedly and they just keep charging you. The AoE is so weak. I have fired it into groups of bots, and it takes like two AoEs to kill. Which, you think about it, think about the charge time, that's anywhere from a half second to full second, I wasn't really timing it, but one to two seconds of not firing just to get shots off to kill garbage is not worthwhile in the slightest. But... We have our final actual gun, 
the P113 Verdict. It's, I'd say it's like a Desert Eagle, but not like a 50 cal Desert Eagle. If we're gonna be gun nerd, I'll say 44 or 357 chambered version. It's okay, actually. This one, I don't have a lot of complaints about. My one complaint is the ever-present one of its light armor pen. And, like I've said, the armor system, it makes it so you kind of have to go medium armor pen or nothing. But it's great against garbage. Whether it's a bunch of jumpy little bugs or the random trash mobs that the ter or not, the Terminids, the automatons have. One to two shots, depending on where you land. Generally, pretty solid gun. Ten round magazine. Like I said, light armor pen, so if you're facing anything thicker, this isn't going to help you. But it's still pretty solid. You don't get the advantage of loading a single round at a time, so you really have to run magazines dry, or you're just wasting shots. Would I prefer it over the Senator? Uh... It's kind of a toss-up, honestly. It's a solid weapon. Could be better, but also could be far, far worse. And it deflects off scout walkers and everything. I do wish you could put, like, even a micro red dot on it. The irons aren't bad, but I'm definitely not enjoying them. I prefer having some form of viable sight on there. It's kind of a complaint I had about the senator as well. That's all the weapons outside of the Incendiary Impact, the G13 Incendiary Impact Grenade. It's identical to an Incendiary Grenade, it just explodes on impact. That's it. Is it good? Eh. I have it with me to kind of showcase if we find a group of guys. I personally just prefer standard impacts because then I can kill what's chasing me. Otherwise, you're just kind of hoping the damage over time kicks in. And that's... It's said to be fixed. I think it's still a bit iffy. Plus, it, a standard impact, that just kills everything. Fire is... A mixed bag. You could say, oh, it's kind of a whiny baby problem, but when you have only four grenades, maybe six if you have the right armor, I kind of want them to be enemy clear weapons. I want them to be something where if I have a pack of guys, I can just whip a grenade and that problem is no longer there. The low initial explosion damage combined with the flame dots. It's just, it's not worth it. Overall, if if you're on the fence about like whether or not you want this this war bond, I'd say maybe wait. The pummeler is the only weapon I think that's in a good state right now. And don't take, don't get me wrong here. I don't want every Warbond to redefine the meta. They can't. But when it comes to things like the the Tenderizer, the description of it and the actual stats feel like they don't match up. And it feels a lot like a side grade to the Liberator. Sure, it might have improved range or one of the many stats we can't see, but because I can't see those stats, I have to go off what I can see, and it's 
It's just kind of a side grade. The pummeler, pummeler's decent. I do wish we had something a little different for an SMG. It is a bit disappointing that the second submachine gun we get is just another version of the Defender. Kinda sucks. Just being like, yep, here's your side grade, have fun. It also feels like this wasn't... For the Polar Patriots, there's a lack of flame weapons. I figured we'd be going all in on incendiaries and like an incendiary SMG and an incendiary assault rifle and just go full bore. Like I said, the armor's fine though. It's by and large what you'd expect. I do wish it was a little better or at least the colors match with things. Oh, there was the booster. Almost forgot about the booster. Tells you how important it was. The booster gives you... I think it's reduced slow or immunity to slow from enemy attacks, so Bile Titan Goo or Hunter Acid attacks. I, I can't see it being one of the boosters that you take just off rip like oh this is a mandatory against bugs kind of booster it really isn't it feels a lot like a crutch where arrowhead isn't willing to actually acknowledge hunters are a bit overpowered because they are come in high numbers they have slowing attacks, damage over time, they can leap. Their one disadvantage is low health, but because they're a trash mob, that's to be expected. So their one weakness is the standard weakness, while they get every possible benefit you can think of. Realistically, for boosters, you're better off taking, you know, the usual ammo on respawn, the, what else, movement speed booster, chance to resist damage, and then the localized scrambler, or you could take extra lives, you could take improved terrain mobility. There's just a lot of better options. Not to mention that slow effect. As it stands, it's a very niche use case. It's rough to sell someone on the idea of you use this exclusively for more or less two enemy attacks. If we got some bots that had like a corrosive or goo grenade or something, then yeah, I could see this being a little more useful. It would have use in both factions. Maybe when we get the Illuminate, they'll have a slow. Judging on what we've seen from data mines, it doesn't sound like they're really going to have a slowing attack. So it might still just be kind of a... I don't want to say, like, terminate bait, but, like, it's one of those you use for a very specific situation. You have accomplished it's just better if you use something else. But that is effectively the entire uh, war bond. The rest of the stuff is minor things to... I'm not really going to run over, like, the emotes. Or the, uh, what is it? The, like, calling cards. The capes. None of that. Those are all things where it's entirely personal preference. 
do you dig the aesthetic or not? I don't really care. I have used the same cape since like the first war bond. I'm not too eager to replace it anytime soon unless we get something just wild. But yeah. And since we're gonna I'm gonna keep this going for a bit, we'll just run the episode out with the remainder of this mission. A little more footage of the pummeler in action. Maybe try to get a little more grenade usage. Of course. 
And that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button, it helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.